back everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at uh, our next milling assignment, uh, learning how to use the boring head on the vertical mill. Uh, in this one you will cut your stock, square it just as you normally would. Um, and For this you'll notice that I used uh, end mills, center cutting end mills specifically, rather than drilling holes um, the holes aren't really all that particular uh, as far as uh, location because we will be boring them and uh, you'll notice the on the, this particular instance I'm using a 5 8 end mill and then two 3 quarter inch end mills so I'm within as long as I'm within easily a 16th of the location uh, I should be fine so using the digital readout uh, I'm able to locate and not too worried about uh, what size holes. I am using quite a bit of uh, aluminum cutting fluid to keep the, uh, the aluminum from galling to the end of the end mill and uh, I'm running at about 1500 RPM because I am uh, don't want to build up as much heat as you normally would. Uh, aluminum is pretty forgiving as long as you can maintain your pressure you shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Now one of the first things you want to do when we come up here in just a second is uh, looking at the uh, uh, boring head as soon as we're done with this last hole is uh, you'll notice you're, you want to pick as large a bore as you possibly can uh, because you want to stay fairly rigid. Um, I'm using my scale to align it. Um, you'll notice I use my scale a lot whether it's to center your uh, lathe tool. On this one I'm using it to eyeball center and then of course tightening it the back side which you've seen the Allen screw uh, tightening it good and tight so it doesn't move. Uh, turning so we'll move into position and you'll notice that uh, what I've done is, is I'll move the uh, boring want to make sure I can fully clear the boring head and you'll notice that there is uh, we'll get this turned around the opposite side and we'll each one of these marks on here is a full thousandth the other thing we're going to do we're going to engage the quill feed on this one we haven't really covered that much um, we're going to put it in the high speed the highest speed we can and we want to go into the front and set our stop so our quill stop so you notice that uh, we'll get down at the bottom of our hole and adjust our quill stop so that it will disengage which you'll see here we'll adjust it a little bit and we'll send that boring bar through our part and you will watch specifically right there at the quill stop um, on the left hand side of the head you've got the uh, feed and gauge your right hand side you see the uh, the quill handle uh, moving as it automatically feeds that down watch in the center there as that stop approaches the uh, quill stop and once it puts a little pressure on there, engage it and click. There it does. It completely uh, backs itself out. It's spring loaded. Um, and I'm just going to check with my scale. I've got plenty of I've got plenty of room, so I'm going to you know go ahead here. I set it to zero. I'm going to go ahead and take another hundred thousandths in this one. and we'll do that until we get to the size that we need. And we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward through most of these uh, holes. You see we're still not even quite to an inch yet. Uh, now I decided to start on this hole um, because it's as close to the three quarter, it's a seven eighths diameter hole. So, I'll, but I'm going to set it to, set to three quarter using my telescoping gauges which will 
go into more depth in another video. So right there we got it at three quarters of an inch. So rather than move anything, I'm going to go ahead and move over those two th three quarter inch holes and send it through a couple of times. One to uh, rough pass, so it'll be taking about uh, an eighth of an inch pass. And then again an empty pass, or what I think your book calls it a spring pass. I've also known people to call it a ghost pass, um, so that it'll uh, take all that spring pressure out of your tool from the rough cut and uh, it'll, it should cut the exact same size. Now that we've got all three of those at three quarters of an inch, go ahead and measure that, make sure that it's uh, the right size. And sure enough, it is three quarter. So we're going to go ahead and move this that eighth inch to uh, to cut that seven eighths hole. And we'll take our finish pass as well. Measure that real quickly. Take a look. Sure enough, there we are, just a little over seven eighths. We got plus or minus five on all these holes, so we're well within the uh, finish size. And then we'll now we'll bore that last large hole, the one inch diameter hole, and we'll take our finish pass. Now in this last one, we're going to set this for that bearing. So we'll come over here and uh, use our bearing and set it against the stop. And we'll feed, run that quill feed up until it touches the bearing so that we've got the proper depth for this bearing. Um, I, I do this often. Uh, I'll use it uh, if I'm going to bore for a bearing or if I'm going to bore for a uh, uh, counter bore. Um, I'll use the, the head of the bolt or the uh, bearing as a guide. So now this is stopped, and when you bring that down, it will go to that depth. So now we've, we've moved this back. We're going to take a light pass and see what it is right now. Looks like we are at, you know, back at, right at 900. Uh, okay, again, now we're at 9, uh, 944. So we'll fit our bearing in there, and our bearing just kind of, we overshot, so it fell in just a little bit, but it is a fairly decent fit. I could use a little Loctite to hold that in, or in this particular instance, I'm going to go ahead and stake that to finish this up. And uh, basically I've dropped my bearing in there, and I'll just hit real close to that edge. Hit it a few times around there to hold that bearing good and tight. And if this was under a, a strain of any type, I could uh, still use a little wicking type of Loctite to uh, hold that in place. And we are done. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and uh, put 
something in the comments or email me.